Mike's here to pick up his new toy. So we've got this thing in pretty good shape, I think. He'll be able to go back and, and uh, finish putting it back together and see if it'll still run when it gets done. Hopefully we haven't changed well, any of the it run. haven't changed any of the geometries too much to where it won't go back together anymore, but it'll definitely be an interesting piece. And it was a lot of fun to practice holding the tolerances on all these dimensions, trying to keep everything as true and straight and parallel and square as possible over that many surfaces is, turns out, is quite the challenge. So now I guess I can call myself a tool maker since I've actually made a tool, so. <laughs> He's done a good job on it, I'll tell you what. It's really, really come into, to a lot more than I thought it was going to do. Yeah, Mike was here when we checked it on the granite plate and uh, went over everything, so he knows that the tolerances are what they are anyway, so it looks good. I said it's probably within less than two thousands anywhere uh, over the entire thing, so I'm pretty excited about that because I think that's good for being done on a machine that's, you know, it could, uh, it's older than my dad would have been probably. Yeah, <laughs> so. Well, guys, if y'all want to really see the history of what this been going on, it's been going on for about a year, almost two years now. January would be two years that I brought these machines in out of a field that they'd stored there for like 30 or 40 years. So if you go back and you can watch some of my videos, it's, and it starts out with a machine rescue, I think is the one it starts with. But uh, this has been an ongoing process for like, almost two years. And uh, it's finally starting to come together. It's, it's come a lot further than I ever thought it was going to come. <laughs> to be honest with you, I was just going to try to make it work, make it look pretty. But we actually, I think, we'll have a pretty good machine. And this late, this machine is destined to go to the uh, Good of the Land Museum in Lindell, Texas. Um, I talked to Justin out there at um, the Bash last year, and Justin uh, said that they could use it there. And at some point in the next few months or years whenever it gets <laughs> finished uh it's going to be in their museum so uh i appreciate everybody that's been keeping up with it and and with brian's videos too about machining it and um and it's just been an awesome process the way everything this collaboration has been working out and i hope i can do his work justice by doing the work that i need to do to it yeah so be sure to go over and check out the rest of the project of doing the hard parts of this i actually think i got the easy part of this job but <laughs> so <laughs> you got the you got the machine to do it with uh, that's the thing about it i couldn't have i could have never got it to this stage without having to to to, to get it to someone that has the the right tools to do it the right tool for the job makes things makes it possible yeah uh, you know i even if i tried to do this job on my cincinnati i never could have held these tolerances on it, it just by the design of the machine it wouldn't have the the stiffness over enough travel to be able to do this you know on a small distance no problem but when you start talking about over feet uh, it starts to become a challenge if you ever try to hold a thousandth over several feet yeah so. someone asked me too one after one of the videos if we were if if this was going to be built to use and make uh precision parts or is it just going to be a display type thing originally it was going to be the best we could get it and now i think that we're getting it there i think it's going to be able to do whatever it was designed to do originally and do it well i actually think it's machined better now and tighter than it was original because we had a lot of witness marks in here that was never never worn yeah and by using that we, we think we have it in better shape than it ever was yeah it's probably from what i can tell off this top, it's probably eight thousandths closer than it ever was to to being square and true like it should be. So before that, it it was always running downhill. Now whether that was by design or whether that was just happened to be the way it came off the line that day, you know who knows. Uh, and maybe that was as good a device as they had to check it with, because as I showed in my video of. Uh, Checking this thing, uh, trying to determine what is square is probably one of the more challenging things to do in your home shop for sure is to prove that 
square is square because it's it's difficult. You can't you can't use just one reference really to do it with because you don't know whether it's right or not. So. <coughs> Yep. Well, I really appreciate Brian doing this for me, and I appreciate again, like you said, like I said earlier, that the uh, you guys watching and supporting what we do. I mean, this is this is what we like to do. We like to uh, to to you know educate people on what this type of work is, and and also with these older machines, I love I love saving these things. We were just talking about these things survived, you know, from this one. I'm dating it around 1890. It survived two world wars where scrap was so so important that it never got never got scrapped. It um, so apparently somebody had a use for it, or like we said, maybe they put it in a corner and didn't even ever got about it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, barn it, find. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you got to think about it. These machines is pre World War One. They did. They survived two world wars and. The amount of scrap that they needed during those wars, everything that was obsolete or not making something for the war effort, was turned into scrap, and and they're they're living proof of our history. So, and um, and it's it's just fun to do it, you know. I always like to think about how many operators these machines have had over the years. You talk about a machine, you know, this thing's a hundred and almost 140 years old, right? If it's 1880, yeah. so. Somebody uh, mentioned <laughs> one time that maybe the first guy that operated was a uh, veteran of the Civil War. You know, very never, well could have been. You, know, you, know. you never, never know. So uh, I'm sure that whoever got it back in 1890 or wherever it was, they were proud to have it, yeah. and, and it made them some money. So. It beat the heck out of a hammer and chisel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I can't imagine. I can't imagine the, how what efforts they had to do make things. I mean. It's file, I guess, yeah. before this has been stones, yeah, you know, hand files <laughs> and stones, and you know, well, kind of do it the best you saw. I guess saws have been around a long time, but and and, it, and it's really it's nice work. It's a lightweight machine compared to what some of like my 24 inch weighs 6,000 pounds. This one might weigh dressed out with everything 1,500, 2,000 pounds at the most, and um, that, you know, that, that the amount of work it can do. It's, we're gonna find out because we're gonna make a couple parts with it. That might be the only huh. two parts we're gonna make with it since now. But it'll, um, we're gonna make it. We're gonna do something. We're gonna make some chips with it eventually. Yeah, pr prove that we did as good a job as we think we've done. <laughs> well, with that, I'm gonna sign off. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We'll catch y'all later. Bailey's definitely approving this message.